say Rainbow Connection by Kermit the Frog. Why are there so many songs about rainbow? Who are you? You are not Kermit the Frog. Get out of my ears. Hello. Hello. So today I thought we would do something a little different. I feel like I'm always saying that now, but you know. I'm honestly still a bit exhausted from all the work that I did for the Poison Ivy video last week. I think I worked like 12 hours on Friday. Which I'm so glad you guys are liking that video and if you haven't seen it, then do if you want. I don't know. And also PAX East is this weekend, so Rachel Tornado is um, red alert. <laughs> I'd say she's full-blown category 5. So I thought we would do a little bit more of a relaxing video today. I've got my coffee and I thought we would take a personality test, as you can probably gather from the title. So specifically I wanted to take the Myers-Briggs one because I feel like that's kind of the most well-known one. I took it a few years ago and I don't remember what I got. All I remember is I think Gandalf was one of the like famous examples. Getting to know me, getting to know all about me. Just nice cozy fun. Hold on, I gotta change the internet. Why does this always happen? I want to connect to the internet. Turn on Wi-Fi. Nick, help. Turn it off and on again, Nick. Really? That's your advice? It worked. So, free personality test. Answer honestly, even if you don't like the answer, try not to leave any neutral answers. So don't be like him. You find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. Yes. Yes, I do. You often get so lost in thoughts that you ignore or forget your surroundings. Not really. I'm gonna go with almost completely disagree on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Depends. Like, I think when I'm driving and I start thinking about things, I am completely paying attention when I'm driving, don't worry. <laughs> but I can lose track of time that way. I do get lost in thoughts sometimes, but I'm almost always very aware of what's going on around me. I'm gonna leave it where it is. Yeah. Makes you think. <laughs> These are probably supposed to be quick answers, but it's fine. You try to respond to emails as soon as possible and cannot stand a messy inbox. Completely disagree. I am the actual worst at responding to emails, <laughs> which is bad when you are... They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no! What do I do when I spill coffee on myself? If you spill coffee on yourself at work, your first instinct will be to rub the stain, but you shouldn't do that. Rubbing will only help to set the stain into the fabric. Okay. Blotting is best. Blotting. Use a paper towel and blot the excess li This is why I can't have nice things. Okay, I know. Mama's stressed out. I know. Would Gandalf do that? I don't think he would. I know Mama's stressed. I know. Oh, Frodo to the rescue. I know, honey. I'm going to put a blanket on myself um, because I'm actually a toddler and apparently cannot have a coffee like a normal human being. Like I was saying, avoiding answering your emails is not great when you're trying to make this whole social media thing work, um, but I can't help it. <laughs> apparently it's, it's a personality trait, so that's my excuse. Next, you find it easy to stay relaxed even when there is some pressure. Uh, I'm gonna say almost fully disagree with that. I almost always am thinking of, I should be doing something, what am I forgetting? Even when I don't have anything to do. Unfortunately, I'm gonna go with disagree on that one. You do not usually initiate conversations. So this is tough because yes, I am extremely introverted, but I think when I'm in a situation with someone, I like to keep the conversation going as much as I can. <laughs> I'm gonna go with mostly agree on that one because I feel like they're talking about just in general initiating conversations and not when I'm already... <laughs> Bless you. You rarely do something just out of sheer curiosity. <sighs> Sorry, thinking real hard about this one. 
I'm gonna mostly disagree with that. I know most of my answers are pretty lukewarm and they kind of said not to do that, but I most definitely do things sometimes just to see if I can do them or what would happen. <laughs> Sam, I'm pretty curious. I feel superior to other people. Being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Mostly disagree with that one. I am not very organized as a person, which if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you probably know that. But you know, I get by, so that would probably be being adaptable. I am usually highly motivated and energetic. I am highly motivated, but energetic, I feel like those shouldn't be, you know, synonymous with each other. But I guess I'll go with mostly agree. When I am highly motivated about something, I do get excited and energetic about it, so. Okay. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. Yes. I am very much a creature of avoiding confrontations. I don't like to upset anyone and I don't like to make anyone feel stupid or like they're wrong even if they are because I know how much that sucks and I personally hate being talked down to and being condescended so I try not to do it to anyone else. You often feel as if you have to justify yourself to other people. Yes! Agree! <laughs> Your home and work environments are quite tidy. You do not mind being at the center of attention. I'm gonna go with mostly disagree on that. I think it depends what I'm being at the center of attention for. I don't like when people bring me up in conversation Rachel does YouTube, Rachel does this, blah, blah, blah. But when I go to a convention and I'm wearing a costume that I'm extremely proud of and I worked really hard on, you bet I love when people notice and take pictures and are really excited. But for the most part, no, I do not like being the center of attention. You consider yourself more practical than creative. I uh, strongly disagree. People can rarely upset you. Mostly disagree. <laughs> I am fragile. Your travel plans are usually well thought out. I was actually just thinking this morning how I want to plan out our New Orleans trip, pick out everything. I would decide what we're doing on each day and how we're getting there and that kind of stuff. So yes, they are usually pretty thought out. It is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings. Strongly disagree. I am very much empathetic, so much so that if I see other people crying, I start tearing up. Weddings are always fun. Your mood can change very quickly. I don't know, I'm gonna go kind of neutral, but agree on that. No, I guess we'll go almost. <laughs> Cause it doesn't have to be a bad thing either. Like if I'm in a bad mood and then I eat some chocolate, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> in a discussion, truth should be more important than people's sensitivities. I agree, mostly. I know that's kind of contradicting what I said about debating. Cause sometimes people need to know what's what even if it makes them feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? You rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. Strongly disagree. I am constantly thinking about that. <laughs> I think as an overthinker, the nature of things is that I can't really do anything without thinking about the consequences and how it may might make other people feel. There's a lot going on up here, <laughs> always. Your work style is closer to random energy spikes than to a methodical and organized approach. I'm gonna go with mostly disagree on that. I think my kind of approach is that I know what I wanna get done in a day, and even if I'm not feeling energetic, I still push through and do it anyways. So I'd say in that way, it is kind of a methodical and organized approach, rather than I'm feeling re really energetic, I'm gonna do a lot of work right now. I am often envious of others mostly agree unfortunately and that's something I'm trying to get better about but I think when you are a social media person or even if you just own social media I think being confronted with other people's lives that seem so much better or you see someone being a lot more successful than you are and it's hard to turn off those feelings of envy. Unfortunately, that's a mostly agree. Again, like I said, I'm trying to get a little bit better and take a step back and just focus on my own 
success and my own life and not compare myself to other people. An interesting book or video game is often better than a social event. Completely agree. <laughs> Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. Completely agree. I mean, honestly, that's the only way that I can get things done because if I don't have a plan and if I don't force myself to work on something, say a costume, then it just straight up won't get done and I know that it won't get done. And I've had projects where I never really developed a schedule or, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and then they never get done. So for me, yes, being strict with myself and making a plan and actually forcing myself to stay on that plan is very, very important. I rarely get carried away by fantasies and ideas. Mostly disagree. You often find yourself lost in thought when you are walking in nature. Strongly agree. That's kind of when I come up with my best ideas, if that makes sense. If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start worrying if you said something wrong. You would think the answer to this would be strongly agree because I'm an overthinker. The other part of that is that I know personally for me, I take forever to respond to things. So I think in my brain, it's kind of if someone hasn't responded to a text message or an email, then it's mostly because they're like me and <laughs> don't like to respond right away. Right away. So I'm going to go with mostly disagree. As a parent, you would rather see your child grow up kind than smart. Completely agree. You do not let other people influence your actions. Uh, mostly disagree. Uh, uh, no. I'm, I'm gonna go kind of neutral on this one, leaning on the disagree side. I am kind of guilty of catering to what people want and if I know someone doesn't like something then I try not to do it and that kind of stuff vice versa if you guys like something then I try to do more of it but there are other times like my Eric Matthews makeup video where I just really want to do it so nothing nobody says can change my mind on that when you sleep your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events mostly agree I rarely have kind of fantastical dreams. I wish I did. That sounds a lot more interesting. It does not take you much time to start getting involved in social activities at your new workplace. Strongly disagree. <laughs> I mean, I work for myself now, but um, not that long ago when I was working full time at a video editing company or any job that I've had, if people are going out after work or if they're planning kind of a little get together, it's not that I don't want to go. It's just I don't end up going because again I am a home buddy and I would much rather be home. You're more of a natural improviser than a careful planner. I'm gonna go neutral agree on that one. Completely depends on the project. Sometimes I'm very careful in planning everything and sometimes I'm just like meh. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Mostly agree I think. You enjoy going to social events that involve dress up or role play activities. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> That is the one kind of social event that I will gladly go to, is one where I can dress up. You often spend time exploring unrealistic and impractical yet intriguing ideas. Yes. You would rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. Again, I'm gonna go neutral. Disagree. I don't remember if that's what I said for the other ones, but I like having a detailed plan. But also sometimes I like to improvise. You are a relatively reserved and quiet person. Agree. If you had a business, you would find it very difficult to fire loyal but underperforming employees. Agree. You often contemplate the reason for human existence. Oh, all the time. Yes. I mean, not the reasons for human existence, but just everything that's encompassed in that. I guess I am fascinated with humans and how far we have come, what we are, and how advanced we are. Just... Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. Mostly disagree. No, I'm gonna go with neutral disagree. I feel like I personally would more often take the path that feels morally right, makes me feel like I'm making the right choice rather than what is the logical choice. And obviously these can be far different depending on the situation. 
what you feel can be very powerful indeed. Keeping your options open is more important than having a to-do list. Mostly disagree. For me, I need to have a to-do list. Otherwise, things won't get done. If your friend is sad about something, you are more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. Mostly agree. And I think sometimes that's all people need is just a shoulder to cry on and a hug. I rarely feel insecure. Mostly disagree. I wouldn't say I always feel insecure. A lot of the times I just don't care. You have no difficulties coming up with a personal timetable and sticking to it. Neutral disagree. <laughs> Sometimes. I do make a personal timetable, but the problem is actually sticking to it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends on how passionate I am about something. Being right is more important than being cooperative when it comes to teamwork. Strongly disagree. I do think being right can be important, but I also think when it comes to teamwork, coming together and compromising can be the most important part because otherwise again things don't get done and people just butt heads unless it's like blatantly obvious that what we're gonna do is gonna fail or <laughs> get someone hurt or something like that you think that everyone's views should be respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not somewhat agree that's a tough one <laughs> because that could be like someone you know could not like pineapple on pizza even if it's a fact that it's freaking delicious. Like, that's fine, that's your personal opinion, even though you're wrong. But then there's also kind of like, flat earth. For the most part, yes, you can have your view, and if that's what you strongly believe, then go for it. But if it's detrimental to the human race, then probably not. <laughs> you feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. <sighs> This one's so iffy too because it depends on what that group of people is. I'm gonna assume they just mean like at a party or something so I'm gonna go with mostly disagree because after I come home from a gathering of large people I am exhausted but I do feel more energetic after spending time with a group of friends. It's tough but I'm assuming because they didn't say group of friends I'm gonna I'm gonna go with disagree. I frequently misplace my things. You see yourself as very emotionally stable. Um, I would say mostly agree. I have definitely gotten a lot better in the past few months. I mean, I'm not free of breakdowns every now and then. <laughs> Your mind is always buzzing with unexplored ideas and plans. Yes, absolutely. You would not call yourself a dreamer. Uh, mostly disagree. I am a dreamer. I am always constantly thinking of ideas that might be far-fetched or my goals and plans uh, but I am also a little bit grounded and I know my limits and that kind of stuff so the lovers the dreamers and me rainbows are visions but only illusions the lovers the dreamers and me You find it difficult to relax when talking in front of many people. Agree. Generally speaking, you rely more on your experience than your imagination. I'm gonna go with mostly disagree on that one because a lot of times I am dealing with a situation where I don't have a lot of experience and so I kind of have to get crafty. You worry too much about what other people think. Mostly agree. If the room is full, you stay closer to the walls, avoiding the center. <laughs> yes. You have a tendency to procrastinate until there's not enough time to do everything. Yes. Mostly agree. Sometimes the only way I can get something done is if I have a hard deadline. So in that case, if I don't have a hard deadline, I tend to procrastinate a lot and then save it for last minute. <laughs> I feel very anxious in stressful situations. Mostly agree. You believe that it is more rewarding to be liked by others than to be powerful. Strongly agree. <laughs> I just want everybody to like me. You have always been interested in unconventional or ambiguous things, like in books, art, or movies. I don't really know what would be considered an unconventional movie. I'm not so much into the more abstract art. I very much like oil paintings and portraits and that kind of stuff. So in that way, and in movies too, I don't really venture off into the more unconventional movies. I kind of stick to what I like and what makes me feel happy. I would say... Mostly disagree. 
You often take initiative in social situations. Mostly disagree. Right? Right, brain? Is that right? So, I don't know. I think this might be different than what I've got what I got last time. Okay. So, my personality type is mediator. No one can stop you from dreaming. I'm 79% introverted. That makes sense. Energy, I'm 69% intuitive, 31% observant. Nature, um, I'm 86% feeling, is how I make my decisions. Identity, this trait underpins all others, showing how confident we are in our abilities and decisions. 72% turbulent. <gasps> is that Frodo? Mediator personalities are true idealists, always looking for the hint of good even in the worst of people and events, searching for ways to make things better. While they may be perceived as calm, reserved, or even shy, mediators have an inner flame and passion that can truly shine. All right, go on. The risk of feeling misunderstood is unfortunately high for the mediator personality type, but when they find like-minded people to spend their time with, the harmony they feel will be a fountain of joy and inspiration. Being a part of the diplomat role group, mediators are guided by their principles rather than by logics, excitement, or practicality. When deciding how to move forward, they will look to honor, beauty, morality, and virtue. Mediators are led by the purity of their intent, not rewards and punishments. Oh, and it has a Tolkien quote. <sighs> Why am I getting emotional? <laughs> I just really like Lord of the Rings, okay? All that is gold does not glitter. Not all who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. One of my favorite quotes ever. Fantasy worlds in particular fascinate mediators more than any other personality type. The strength of their visionary communication style lends itself well to the creative works, and it comes as no surprise that many famous mediators are poets, writers, and actors. Understanding themselves and their place in the world is important to the mediators, and they explore these ideas by projecting themselves onto the work. Unlike their extroverted cousins, though, mediators will focus their attention on just a few people, a single worthy cause, spread too thinly, they'll run out of energy, and even become dejected and overwhelmed by all the bad in the world that they can't fix. Mediators often drift into thought, enjoying contemplating the hypothetical and philosophical more than any other personality type. Left unchecked, mediators may start to lose touch, withdrawing into hermit mode, and it can take a great deal of energy from their friends or partners to bring them back to the real world. Mediators I may know. William Shakespeare, J.R.R. Tolkien, Bjork, and Johnny Depp, um, and Julia Roberts, okay, Lisa Kudrow, Tom Hiddleston, Alicia Keys, Frodo Baggins, we are one, and Anne from Anne of Green Gables, and Fox Mulder, <laughs> okay, Amelie Poulon, Arwen, idealistic, seek and value harmony, open-minded and flexible, very creative, passionate and energetic, dedicated and hardworking. My weaknesses, too idealistic, too altruistic, impractical, dislike dealing with data. <laughs> yes. Takes things personally. <laughs> uh, often takes challenges and criticisms personally rather than inspiration to reassess their positions. Avoiding conflict as much as possible. Mediators will put a great deal of time and energy into trying to align their principles and criticisms into a middle ground that satisfies everyone. Des me, beach. Um, romantic relationships. Mediators share a sincere belief in the idea of relationships that two people can come together and make each other better and happier than they were alone, and they will take great efforts to show support and affection in order to make this ideal a reality. This aversion to conflict, while contributing greatly to stability in the relationship when done right, is probably the most urgent quality for mediators to work on. Between their sensitivity and imagination, mediators are prone to internalizing even objective statements and facts, reading into them themes and exaggerated consequences, sometimes responding as though these comments are metaphors designed to, stri designed to threaten the very foundations of their principles. Naturally, this is almost certainly an overreaction, and mediators should practice what they preach and focus on improving their ability to respond to crit criticism with calm objectivity rather than irrational accusations and weaponized guilt. But that's at their uncommon worst. At their best, mediators do everything they can to be the ideal partner, staying true to themselves and encouraging their partners to do the same. People with this personality type are generous in their affection with a queer preference for putting the pleasure of their partners. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Moving on. Friends. Also, can I say the best part about springtime is Robin's eggs? Might have been a bad choice right before filming. 
<clears throat> to top it all off, ideas like networking and the friend of my friend is my friend hold little weight with mediators. I absolutely hate networking. <sighs> Again, it's probably not good as a social media er. But if mediator shields are properly navigated and they decide to open up and trust another person, a strong, stable friendship will ensue. Marked by passionate support and idealism, subtle poetic wit, and a level of emotional insight that is hard to match. Um, careers. It is perhaps more challenging for mediators to find a satisfying career more than any other type. Though intelligent, the re- Though intelligent, the regimented- Sure about that? <laughs> Though intelligent, the regimented learning style of most schools makes long years Earning an advanced degree, a formidable and undertaking, a formidable undertaking for people with the mediator personality type. At the same time, that's often what's needed to advance in a field that rings true for them. Mediators often wish that they could just be doing what they love without the stress and rigor of professional life. Too many mediators drift in frustration, ultimately succumbing to the necessities of day-to-day -day life in a job that wasn't meant for them. And it's often a risk to break away into something less dependable but more rewarding. To find a career that resonates with mediator's values, though, that's more than just a job. Sometimes it's just what needs to be done. Conclusion. Few personality types are as poetic and kind-hearted as mediators. Their altruism and vivid imagination allow mediators to overcome many challenging obstacles, more often than not brightening the lives of those around them. Mediators' creativity is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Yet, mediators can be easily tripped up in areas where their idealism and passion are more liability than they are an asset. Whether it is navigating interpersonal conflicts, confronting unpleasant facts, pursuing self-realization, or finding a career path that aligns well with your inner core, you may face numerous challenges that at times can make you even question who you really are. So, overall, I'd say, wow. <laughs> it does seem like I got a different result this time than I did when I first did it, which is also interesting. I think I remember taking it last time and being like, I guess, yeah, kind of. But this one, there were certain sentences where I was like, get out of my brain. So that's really, really cool. And the fact that J.R.R. Tolkien shares some of the same personality traits makes a lot of sense. And the fact that Anne of Green Gables is supposedly a mediator too also makes sense. <laughs> and Julia Roberts, duh. So yeah, that was it. Um, I ended up recording a lot of footage, so this might be a longer video, but you know, sometimes it's nice to just sit down and chat. Hopefully you guys like this. Let me know if you guys have taken this and what your personality types are. I'd really love to know. Anyways, I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here, which you probably aren't, um, unless you know you're watching a rando take a personality test, um, feel free to subscribe. I upload twice a week and we have fun here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Getting to know you, getting to something. Something like you like me. Nailed it. I just want to connect to the internet, please. Connect to a network. Why? Calm down, laptop. My god. It's just a personality test. Ooh, easy. We're not running sims over here. This thing sounds like it's gonna blow up. My therapy dog. But when mama spills coffee on herself and makes a big deal out of it when she probably shouldn't. Oh my god, everything's falling apart. I do not buy- blah, blah. I do not- blah. <laughs> Okay. Woo! Got a package for me? Hi there, sir. <laughs> Don't look at me. You are relatively- blah. You are rel- <laughs> Reading be like. <laughs> I know. You have a tendency to procrastinate- <laughs> <laughs> wow. You believe that there is more reward. Uh,